Hello once again. So in this video, I'm going to show you a lot about kind of key manipulation. I've done a video with how to remap your keys. This is kind of building off of that and getting a little bit more advanced. A lot of the stuff I'm going to show you is really more going to be used for gaming than anything else. If you do have a reason why you would use this outside of gaming, definitely let me know because I'd be kind of curious what other kind of uses this could have. But for the most part, it's going to be a gaming kind of tutorial here uh, as an intro. So let's go ahead and jump into that code, shall we? Cool. So the first thing we got here is the toggle. I'm going to do the left button for this one. But when I press that, it's going to hit this line toggle. <clears throat> and what that variable is, is it starts out as zero, hits that line, it changes to one. When it hits that line again, it's going to change it back to zero. I really like to think of this kind of like an on and off switch for your script. It's kind of the best way to really explain this. But it's very simple. It's just toggle an expression the thing here equals with the two dots, explanation point, toggle. And like with all my videos, I'll post all this code in the description below for you guys. And you can manipulate it however you need. So it starts out at zero, it hits this, it changes to one. It's then going to do if toggle equals one, which on the first go it will. It's going to hold my click button down, which is just my left mouse button. I hit L button again, it's going to toggle back to zero, meaning it's going to hit this else down here. And it's going to go ahead and click up. So this is uh, something I kind of really seen used in stuff like Call of Duty, that kind of thing. For someone who just doesn't feel like holding the mouse button down, they just want to do it as clicks instead. It can be used for other keys, you know, do send uh, P down and send P up, whatever you want to do with it. You can definitely do that. And it doesn't have to be the same thing where it's left button triggering the left button. I could do left button, send P down. It's whatever you guys want to do. So you can definitely change this up as much as you need to. So this we can go ahead and take a look at. Let's launch that. I'm going to go ahead and um, push the L button. I'm not holding it down or anything uh, physically, but as you can see, it's acting like it's down, which it is. So it's highlighting everything. And then I'm going to go ahead and press L button again. And there we go. It went back up. That one's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and close that out. That's going to mess up my stuff here go now on this one i got a little bit more to look at a few different kind of things you can do the first one i'm going to press f1 it's going to start a loop and i'm going to have it send e i'm going to have it send every 500 milliseconds with this sleep here this can be adjusted to whatever you want if you want it to send every second you can or if you don't even want that and you just want to spam the living crap out of E, go ahead and just delete this sleep or you can just comment it out like that. So it's really how fast you want that E to be sent. But for the video, as a, a better visual, I'm just putting a sleep 5000 there. Now with the loop, if you have a way that you want it to break, you can definitely do that. I've explained breaks in my other loop videos. But in this one, I'm just going to stick with a very simple press F2 and reload as a way to stop it. It's just really simple that way. Maybe I don't really have a way for it to detect when it should break. This is how you're going to want to do it then. Let's go ahead and take a look at that section. I'm going to go ahead, press F1. And as you see, it's sending E every 500 milliseconds. If I want to stop it, I'm just going to push F2 and stop it. That one's pretty simple. It's a great way to spam a key in a game, uh, especially really fast. If I want to start it again, all I'm doing is pushing F1 and then F2 again to stop it. Go ahead and delete that. Now, I see this one being asked a lot with people wonder wondering how they can press a key down, have it do something, and then do something again when I actually release that key. And that's where that key weight's going to come into place there. I'm going to press down F3. I'm going to hold it down and continue to hold it. 
So the first thing it's going to do is send H. It's then going to sit there and watch F3 to be released. And once it does, it's going to send I. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So F3, I'm holding it down. You know, wait a few seconds, why not? And I'm going to release it, and it sends that I. Now if I uh, do want that to go a little faster, maybe for a different reason, I can just push F3, and it's going to do both, because it saw that F3 was already released. So that's a great way to kind of control how long between different actions something's going to be performed. Uh, you know, once again, see this used a lot in gaming. Down here, uh, we got pretty much the exact same script you saw up there. The only difference is I'm using set match mode 2 if when activate. Uh, basically set title match mode notepad. That's just saying that it's looking for the window to have the word notepad in it, like right here. If I had not put this line of code in there, I would have to type out this whole window name here, and it would have to be an exact match. I'm just saying, hey, as long as it contains notepad, you're in the right program there. And it's going to do the exact same thing as it did up here with the uh, key weight. This is great because, you know, maybe you have this set up for a game you're playing, but then you switch over to Chrome or a chat or something and you accidentally hit F3. You don't want it to maybe start performing actions when you made a mistake on what window you're on. That's just kind of like a safety net there, so it doesn't really mess with other programs besides the one it's really supposed to be manipulating. One thing to kind of throw in here uh, with the gaming stuff, I've you know, mentioned this in other gaming videos that I've done with my Minecraft, Trove, that kind of stuff. Some video games can actually see when you're doing send commands in AHK. So if you're playing a single player game, you're going to be fine. They don't care if you cheat at all. But if you're playing an online, like, multiplayer game, just, you know, fair warning, sometimes they can see that, you can get banned, you can get a warning. Uh, if they can't detect it, and maybe another player sees a character kind of performing, like, repetitive actions in a very timed manner, they might think, like, okay, this guy is definitely running an automation script, and they could report you. So just fair warning on that, <laughs> always be careful with that kind of stuff when you're online. Next one we got here, and sorry, I'm not going to show this one just because it's the exact same thing as the one I showed you before, just with that win activate. So with this one, this one's actually really cool. I use this one a lot in video games to control my volume. This could be helpful for you if you don't have access to your volume bar in-game. And you don't really want to jump out of the game, change your volume, and then jump back into the game. Especially if you're online. You know, that gets you killed or something. This is a great way to do this. Also, if your keyboard doesn't have volume controls on it, this can help you out by adding a way to control your volume very easily. But once again, I'm going to push F4 as my hotkey. I got that toggle there. It starts at 0, but then it changes to 1. If toggle equals 1... It's going to get my mouse coordinates of where it's currently at, save it as variable 1, and then it's going to set a timer to go to vol look every 200 milliseconds, which is down here. Um, if I hit this again, it's going to do that else, and it's just going to turn that timer off. So essentially the F4 hotkey is being used as an on and off switch for this with all this code. So the real magic is happening down here. So the first thing it's going to do, it's going to get the key state, and I'm just using the V key. So that means when this is on, it's waiting for me to hold the V key down. If I do hold the V key down, it's going to now get my mouse positions again, but as variable 2. So the first one it's going to do, it's going to compare variable 2 and variable 1. If it's less than go ahead and change my volume by 5. So this if right here is basically saying, okay, my mouse started here. If I'm going in this direction, decrease my volume. Down here we got a greater, meaning if my mouse is going in this direction, increase my volume. So you can change this however you want. I just have it at 5 because I think that's pretty much what I like to use. 
if you want it to be less extreme of a volume change, you can change it to one. If you want it to be a more extreme volume change, you know, change it to 10 or whatever. Just kind of play around with it, see what you think works best for you. And then it's just going to save variable two back into variable one. So it can continue checking that I'm still moving my mouse and keep decreasing the volume or increasing my volume if I'm going this way. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video real quick so that I can adjust my recording size here so you can actually see my volume uh, bar to really see it in action. So hold on real quick. All right, there we go. So down here, you can see my volume bar a little better. I'm at currently at 38. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on with F4. And it's now listening for that V press to be done. Go ahead and reopen that so you can see it. So I'm at 38. I'm going to hold V down and I'm going to decrease my volume by moving my mouse this way. So here we go. V down. And as you see, it's moving it down. Go in the opposite direction, it's moving it up. Back down. And once I release the V, it just stops. Press it again to increase my volume. So I use this one quite a lot in both work when I remote sign into my desktop. And I want to control my actual system volume instead of me having to minimize my workspace to control my volume. I can do it from there. And I also use this in gaming a lot when I just want to... Basically what I do for gaming is when I'm playing the game, I'll have the volume really low. But if there's a cutscene or something, I want to quickly increase that volume. This is a great way to do it. Obviously right here, you can change V to whatever you want. I just use V for volume. It can be an F key if you want, you know, F1. When I hold that down, do all that kind of stuff. So it really depends on you. You know, a lot of video games, V is an actual hotkey, so you might not want to use that. All right. And the last thing I got here is detecting if a button is down and I'm holding it. I want it to perform an action. But if I'm not holding it, as in I kind of just tapped it, I want it to go ahead and act as normal. That way, if maybe I'm in a chat and I'm talking to somebody, it's going to type like normal. But if I sit there and hold that key down, then I want it to actually perform an action instead. I'm going to use P in this example. I just have a small sleep there, just so it has time to detect if I'm holding it down or not. Get key state. State is the variable that it's going to save P. So it's basically saying, is it up or down, which is just D or U. So if the state equals D, as in I'm still holding it down, form this action. I'm just going to use a message box in this. This is where you guys are going to really manipulate your code to what you want the action to perform. But if I just kind of press the button as if I'm just kind of normally typing, I'm going to turn that hotkey off send p and then turn it back on the reason i'm using this hotkey off on thing is if i didn't have these and it sent p it would actually re-trigger this hotkey and it would basically start in an infinity loop going on forever and ever uh, thankfully auto hotkey does have a built-in kind of thing for that kind of stuff where if it detects that you're sending a key and triggering the hotkey really really fast over and over again, you'll actually get a message box popping up saying something like, hey, we noticed you sent this hotkey, you know, a hundred times in the last second. Are you sure you want to continue or do you want to close out of the program? So to prevent that from happening, just make sure you have that hotkey off temporarily. Send P so it's normal and doesn't trigger this hotkey. And then you can go ahead and turn it back on. You can use it again. Let's go ahead and take a look at that in action. Let me just add some lines here. So I'm going to go ahead and press and hold the P button down. And there's that message box I just got. P is held. Now let's say I'm typing. Oh, spelled that wrong. But as you see, it put that P there for me. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it for that.
Um, you know, once again, you can be like, it's a, but then if I hold it down, it triggered there. So this is a great way to really use hotkeys for stuff that you also want it to maybe do normal stuff, especially if this is already a hotkey in the game. You can have it perform its normal action, but then also have it perform an auto hotkey action using the exact same key. This is really cool for really expanding on your keyboard's capabilities. Yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions about any of the stuff I just showed you in here, want me to expand on it, please comment below, let me know. I'm pretty good at answering people's questions when they ask, usually pretty quickly. And it also gives me more ideas on what other kind of videos you guys might want to see. Let me know what other kind of uses you guys have for this. I'd love to hear it. Give me new ideas, that sort of stuff, or how it can help me in my life. Please subscribe. It definitely helps me out quite a bit. Hit that like button. Maybe hit that notification if you want to see my new videos, because I am uploading usually about two to three videos every week in different categories having to do with auto hotkeys. So thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one.